today's video is going to be all about the classic 2007 model by Grishko and I'm going to speak to you about in this episode the different models built on the 2007 2007 however you want to call it last and I'm going to do a series so in each episode I'll be showing you the different models that are built on that last because I've I've realized there's quite a lack of education about all the different models and I'm such a geek as you probably know with shoes so I thought well why not go for it and I get so many um questions about the differences between the models um I get asked um about the different shanks and I'll also be doing different episodes by the way about shanks um about all the different variations because it's unbelievable just how many variations there are in the Grishko um world <laughs> and I just feel that unfortunately um there's a lot of retailers out there that do not stock as many models um because they obviously stock other brands okay so um you know I wanted to be able to help people with this so here we are um, for everybody that's writing, by the way, I will be reading as I go along and I will, um, if you want to ask questions, you can, but I might not have enough time to answer them all, but just, um, you know, I'll answer at a later date even. So, um, this is going to be a bloody long live, so I hope that if you're um, here, you're not going to get bored. <laughs> Um, if you do want to drop out, don't worry because I will save this and I'm going to um, upload it later on as an IGTV so if you've got stuff to do or you get you know you want to watch it later feel free okay so um I've actually wrote some notes as I go along so if you see me looking down it's because I'm reading and I'm trying to remember all the aspects I want to go into because I want to go into the most I want to like tell you guys as much information as I possibly can um I think that's very vital so let's start um first of all i'm going to grab the classic 2007 which is where you know it's the original 2007 model now some people call it 2007 um you know just see mr grishko is logged in hi hope you guys are well um so we have oops oh my god pointies everywhere <laughs> So um, we'll start with the classic 2007. Um, so for those of you just tuning in, this is um, the first of many videos I'll be doing. And we're going to start with all about the models built on the 2007 last. For those of you who don't know what a last is, let me just describe this part. So in the factory, there are different um, lasts for different point shoes. So when you have that last, the other models um, that are built on that last are built on the same last, if that makes sense. But there are different attributes to each model. Okay, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about with this series. So, 2007. This is the classic 2007 here. And this is um, what all the other ones I'm going to go on about are made on. So, with the classic 2007, I'm sure you guys all know about this model, right? It was... It's one of the top selling Grisho models and um, a lot of retailers tend to stock this one. Now, if you're in America, this will be classed as 3007, but I'll go into that in a moment, so hold on. Now, let's talk about all of the attributes. Let's talk about the box shape. So this is the box and this is the part that your toes go into for those of you who don't do point already. Now, the box shape is quite tapered as you can see and it has a low profile height, which also is known as the crown. It also has a paste that is um, what I like to call the traditional paste, and it's, it's quite solid. Um, and this is personally, personally why I find that some people go on about Grishko saying, oh, I tried Grishko's and they was too hard. And it's like, well, it's because most of the time, a lot of people are putting models that are too, um, hard for their personal tastes because there is so much variety but unfortunately a lot of retailers tend to stock um a few Grishko models and that's it so i'll explain about why you would find it hard 
So the box paste is the traditional paste, in my opinion. It takes a little bit longer to mold to the foot, um, but it's very supportive. Next up, we have the wings of the shoe here. The wings on a 2007 are quite high, but not the highest in these models that I'm about to show you. We have the side quarters here. And the side quarters are very medium, kind of high, I would say, personally. Then we have the heel. The heel is high. The satin on the 2007 is a classic satin. Then we have the vamp height, and it's quite a long vamp on 2007. And we have the vamp cut. This is a U vamp. Now, um, it has a cotton drawstring, but I have noticed recently on some of my orders that I've got that they've had an elastic drawstring, and I don't know why, because I'm really not a fan of elastic drawstrings. Personally, I feel if the point shoe fits well, you should not have to do much with the drawstring. If you are doing a lot with the drawstring, then something's up with the fit, usually. Personally, I don't even have a drawstring in mine. I just whip it out or order it without it. So, um, typically, we'll have a cotton drawstring. Next up, um, the platform. So, the platform on a point shoe and the size of the platform is determined by a few factors. It's determined by the shape of the box, the size um, the width of the shoe and the profile height. Because 2007 is a tapered shoe with a low profile, the platform is actually more on the smaller side. But I will tell you about the other models with the wider platforms built on 2007 last in a moment. Next up, we have the shank. Now the shank is inside the shoe and it's a backbone of the shoe. It's the part that supports your foot when you're on point and it goes into your arch and gives you all the support but also helps you from going too far over or pulling you too far back. Shank strength is crucial, but I will go into um, a whole kind of video about shank strength another time because there's too much to say right now. So this is a classic medium shank and it has a nice generous bend of the arch here as you can see. Now it's worth noting that when shoes are new they will be stiff as a board so it does take, you know, time to mold them. Um, but you can do that yourself a little bit, but nothing too crazy because you don't want to bend the shoe in the wrong area, but also you don't want to, um, you know, break the shoes too soon. So this is a typical medium. As you can see, it melts into the arch really um, beautifully. And it also has a nice demi point, but it's not the um, easiest of demi points. It takes a little bit of time. In a moment, I will show you the attributes of Demi Point and the other 2007 last models. Um, so those are the attributes of 2007, the very classic model. Now, next up, we have the 2007 Pro. I'm often asked, um, what is the difference between 2007 um, Pro and Pro Flex? Um, and a lot of people don't actually understand that the Pro and Pro Flex can come in different Grishko models as well. Um, Pro basically means sound absorption. This is a 2007 Pro here. So the only things that vary here with Pro is sound absorption, which uh, means that it's not as noisy. And they put like a kind of a layer here and in the pleats so that it doesn't make as much noise when you're on stage. But also in the Pro model, the box paste is a little bit not as um, stiff as the typical um, 2007, I found anyways. And also what I personally found with the Pro models um, is the shank is a little bit more generous. So even though this is a medium strength um, 2007 um, and it's just the Pro model, there is a little bit more flexibility in the shank there at the three quarter point. And the roll through is a little bit easier to break in. And that's the only difference with the Pro. Next up, we have 2007 Pro Flex. So you're gonna have to bear, me, bear with me with this one because I don't actually have a brand new one to show you um, because I personally do not sell many 2007 Pro Flex. Now, the reason for that is, is personally I find with the Pro Flex shanks in um, say 2007 Maya One, I find that they are 
super, super bendy. Now, ProFlex Shank, in my opinion, is okay for dancers that either have really flat feet and need a little bit extra to get over, or they're very um, lightweight dancers and they're quite young and new to point and they don't have super bendy feet and can handle the ProFlex Shank, or it's for people that want a stage ready shoe and they don't mind it dying quickly. With the ProFlex Shank in 2007 and my one, it is really, really bendy, even in the medium. Um, you can also order it in soft, medium, and hard. People don't seem to realize that. But that, honestly, I've had it in the Maya 1 in medium and hard, and I've not noticed much difference between the two. So this is a special order that I had years ago. Ignore the vamp length because it's way too short, and it was, it was a bit of a trial and error shoe. Anyways, this is a Pro Flex Shank, and it's a 2007, so... As you can see, it wants to break lower down. Now, what I have seen is that some dancers that wear the Pro Flex Shank in 2007 is that it's too soft for them. So what happens is it often breaks too low down the foot and it causes their metatarsals to bend at a weird angle. And some in some dancers, it makes them actually knuckle. Um, or it just breaks really kind of funkily and you can see it and it just doesn't look as attractive but it can work so don't get put off the fact of pro flex just make sure that you get fitted professionally and um you know the fitter that you're being fitted by actually knows a lot about grishkos because i seem to see a lot of people being thrown into the pro flex shank when in my opinion they really shouldn't be so that's the difference in ProFlex. ProFlex also has um, sound absorption too, by the way. So it has the best of both worlds with the Pro and the ProFlex. Anyway, I'm really babbling now. No, I really don't want to, you know, go on to too much um, overwhelming information, but hopefully this will help. So next up, um, I'm going to show you Novice 2007. So Novice 2007 um, is a super soft shank shoe, again from 2007, hence the name. Now this one is an interesting shoe because if you didn't know, in Grishko there's like a three step process that they like to speak about with starting point work. And it's that you would start with demi point shoes. Um, I will show you those in a second, which are also built on 2007 last. And they are called exam model. Now, typically, unfortunately, a lot of people don't seem to wear demi points, but personally, I fit them a lot because I really educate schools about them. And I still wear demi points as well because they make such a difference. I actually did a whole video about demi points and the benefits if you go to my YouTube channel to find out about that. So anyway, um, novice was the kind of second step from... Um, Oh, hang on, no. There's the exam demi point shoe, there's Alice, and then there's Novice. I'll show you Alice in a moment. So anyways, Novice 2007 was originally designed for beginners, hence the name Novice. However, um, I have worn it as well, and you know what? I've even fitted dancers in it that are not necessarily beginners. Some of them just have flutter feet, or, you know, they wanted a kind of softer version of a 2007, so it worked. So again, 2007 shape, the differences are it has a super soft shank. As you can see, it's got the SS on the bottom there. Um, it's very generous in the three quarter area. It has an easier roll through because it's a super soft shank, but also the box paste is not taken up as high here or at the sides. So it's not going to be as stiff as a typical 2007 because of the way that it's like a half box or whatever they call it. So it, it makes less um, kind of force on the metatarsals. So that's why it's quite a nice shoe for the younger dancer if a 2007 works on them. Um, as always, don't get kind of, um, how can I pull it? Don't get obsessed with um, details of point shoes. I always say to people, look, you really need to go and try on all the Grishko models to see um, what works for you. Because sometimes, 
you know, what you think might not work actually does work. And this is why when I fit people, I always go through a stack of models. And another interesting thing is people say to me, oh, but I tried Rishko's and I didn't like them. And it's like, most of the time it's because they simply haven't had the opportunity to try the other models on because the retailers have not stopped them. So when I do fit them, you'll be amazed. They always find something they love. And most of the time, people that I fit, I manage to find at least four models of Grishko's that they adore. Um, some models, um, some models, some dancers actually um, wear different models for different things. So for example, you'll have um, some dancers that prefer to wear a certain shoe at the bar, then they switch for something else for center work. And also what's important is, um, depending if they're dancing a performance or doing an exam, um, they'll have different shoes for that and different strengths of shoes for different roles that they're dancing. Um, it's also crucial to get fitted um, every time. Oops, hang on a second, I'm just scrolling down my feed to read what people are saying because I haven't been taking notice, sorry. <laughs> um, it's really important to get fitted every time if you can because your feet do change and not only do your feet change, your strength can change, you can have injuries or previous injuries that play up. Um, the fitter needs to analyze your shoes to see how you broke them down and what they can do to perfect that. Um, there is so much science in point shoe fitting and it's really crucial to try and stick with the same fitter because, you know, it's like they get to know you and how you work and how your feet work. If you keep switching point shoe fitters, it can make it a little bit confusing because also no point shoe fitter is the same. Every point shoe fitter has their own way of um, fitting and everyone has different ideas. So, you know, find a fitter that you love and try to stick with them because you're on a journey together and that fitter is going to um, kind of be with you throughout the progress of point work. Um, for example, I've been fitting Grishko Girl Shakira since she started point work, and she is um, like an amazing dancer now. She's in full time training. She's actually going to be joining me for the Instagram live that I'm doing next Friday on Grishko World Instagram. So be sure to tune into that. And it's really fascinating to see the progress of a dancer and how her feet change. And, you know, it's just. There's so much. I'm just going to read some of the comments. I know, Alex, I'm so desperate to fit you. Um, so for those of you who are wondering about my Scotland trip, it is going to happen. Um, basically, what ended up happening with me is I got ill for ages. Um, so I had to focus my energy on the fittings I had where I was. Um, then I got invited to America with Grishko, so I did that, and then I came back, and then the whole coronavirus thing happened, so this is why I haven't been travelling much. Um, but yeah, I will be getting to Scotland, um, it will happen, for sure. Um, and when it does, Alex, I will let you know, because I am dying to fit you, I'm so, I'm so, like, I think I can help you. So anyways, um, this is the novice, so I think I've gone through enough about the novice now, so you know enough about it, right? Any questions, just let me know. Next up, I forgot to mention the Alice. So I think the Alice comes after in their little three-step progress um, program thing. So this is Alice. Now, Alice is um, an extremely, extremely soft shoe. It is, um, in my, I've only really fitted it on dancers that are very lightweight because of the lightness of the shoe. It is a lot lighter weight in both um, pace and shank than Novice 2007. Again, it's built on 2007 last. But the difference is it has a brushed cotton lining, which is quite soft. Um, and again, it's not as hard. The paste is actually, in my, I think it's the paste that they use, the flexible paste. I'll go into that in a moment as you can see. And the shank is extremely bendy. Can you see that? So whenever I fit into an Alice, which isn't that often, it's usually on lighter weight dancers who are younger, um, typically dancers that do not have, um, you know, high arches or anything crazy like that. 
and it's designed purely for bar use very minimal center i would say nothing crazy it's, it's a very total beginner kind of model of 2007. now i just want to give you my own personal input um if I'm fitting a beginner in, and I like her in a 2007 and she really likes 2007, but she might find that, you know, the 2007 classic has, you know, too much hardness or whatever in the box or the shank, then I will play around with that and figure out with the different models on 2007. Or I will um, put her in, say for example, if the pace of the 2007 is too hard, but she really likes the shoe, I'll switch and go to either 3007 now, which I'll talk to you about in a moment, or I'll go to 2007 Pro because it's a bit more flexible in the paste, um, or I'll go for a Nova. You know, there's so many options, it's just unbelievable. But also Shanks, um, you know, again, the fascination with the 2007 Pro Flex. If someone, I've actually done this a few times where someone feels hell bent that they want 2007 Pro Flex still. And um, I've switched them to 2007 in a um, super soft or a soft because it still has that pliability, but um, gives a little bit more support and doesn't break as fast or break down as fast, I should say. Anyways, so that's enough about Alice. This is a really weird format to do on a live. I've done a lot of lives, but I kind of wanted to make it a bit more formal so that I get enough information into it so that when I upload it as a... IGTV video, it's not going to be like constantly answering people's questions or whatever. So, next up, we're going to go on to the Nova, the Nova Classic first. Let me find it one moment. Um, so, I've got a Nova Pro here. I just need to find the classic Nova. Oh, here it is. So, the Nova Classic, um, there are, again, there's three different versions of Nova. There's Nova, Nova Pro, and Nova Flex, which is pretty much like Nova Pro Flex, but they called it Nova Flex for some reason. In fact, okay, there is a slight difference with Nova Flex to Pro, Pro Flex. It's a little bit more thicker, I think, in the show. We'll get there in a moment. Oh my God, a bit of waffle. <laughs> so classic Nova. Personally, it's one of my top selling shoes. Um, the Nova, again, 2007 shape, um, but it has these differences. It has flexible paste. So it has a generous squish. Um, so it really takes shape to the foot quicker, um, but it doesn't, alter the lifespan it also has higher wings here which gives a little bit more stability on point um look smoother great for bunions great for taylor's bunions great for dancers that need a little bit more stability um, to keep more aligned it has a different platform it is more oval that's the best way i can describe it it's not um it is wider but it's not in my opinion, I don't like to use the word wide to describe the Nova platform. I like to use the word oval because that's literally what it feels like when you're on point in it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've worn all the models so I can tell you oodles about them. Next up, what's different? It's more of a deeper U-cut vamp. It also has a little bit slightly lower side, nothing drastic, but then big difference. The heel height is a lot lower, as you can see. It also features... Um, well, at least I think it does, um, a double upper satin. Um, so it's basically, the double upper makes the satin appear smoother. Can you see that? It's a lot more smoother there. Less wrinkles, um, it looks more streamlined. Nova shanks are exactly the same as 2007 shanks. So for those of you who don't know, in, um, say classic 2007, 3007, um, even in the pro versions and in Nova, um, Nova Pro, um, what else? Yeah, in, uh, yeah those three. Um, all those models have shanks that vary from super soft, soft, medium, hard, super hard, super, super hard. Then of course, if you do a custom order, also known as a special order, you can um, 
change things about the shoes. Um, but that's a video for another time. So that's Nova. Also, um, with the Nova shoe, some people find that because of the more flexible paste in the box, it can help them get over a little bit better as well. Um, roll through is the same as a classic 2007. Next up, we have Nova Pro. So again, it's exactly the same as Nova, but the differences are exactly like the differences with the 2007 Pro. So that means sound absorption which is in this bit and in the pleats, so it's not as noisy. And again, what I personally find is in the pro version, the box paste, slightly more, you know, flexible, even though it's flexible paste already, and more flexible in the shank and the roll through. Um, so yeah, that's the only differences between Nova and Nova Pro. Next up, we have Nova Flex. So, whoops. <laughs> I don't know why they called it Nova Flex and not Nova Pro Flex. I think it's because there is slight differences between Pro Flex and Flex. Um, actually, yeah, there is. Um, there, there absolutely is, because just feeling it, I can feel it. So in the Nova Flex shank, it's more sturdy than the 2007 Pro Flex shank. It has um, more sturdiness at the lower portion here, and it's um, more generous at the free quarter area. So that's the difference with Nova Flex. Now, one thing I have noticed personally is that the Nova Flex shoe can um, come up a little bit different in size, and I don't know why that is. Hey, Andy. Um, so that's Nova Flex. Next up, we have, um, what should I talk about next? Oh, yes, let's do this one. We're gonna speak about Miracle, because you know what? Not many people speak about Miracle, um, and Let's tell you about it. So Miracle, as far as I know, was the very first padded Grishko model to come out. It came out quite a few years ago, um, and I still stock it. Um, I still sell a lot of Miracles, and it's like a Nova. So it has the low heel, double upper, so the satin is smoother. The vamp is more U-cut, a little bit of a deeper U-cut than Nova, possibly. But the vamp is also a little bit shorter than Nova. It's minimal though. I'm talking, um, this is a four and a half and this is a four and a half. Let's have a look. It's probably like half a centimeter almost shorter. Um, so bear that in mind. It feels like Nova on point because the platform is very oval as you can see. Um, now, the difference with Miracle, there's um, a few interesting things here. It has a very super soft lining. The lining is like a kind of velour material and it has nanoparticles in it, which aid with drying out the lining and stop bacteria. So it's all in here, but also it's all in the box and it's in the, there's a little squishy toe bit in the bottom of the platform. Can you see? The squishy toe bit is made of um, foam as far as I know so it's super padded now you know some dancers like to wear the shoe without any padding at all um, another thing about padding in point shoes by the way if you've ever been fitted by me you'll know that I fit minimal and build up to what the dancer requires I never fit with anything bulky because in my opinion it disrupts getting the perfect fit of the shoe and it's very crucial to fit to the dancer's foot, not fit to all this bulky padding. Because not only does it make the shape of the shoe look strange, but also it can create unnecessary stuffing in the shoe and disrupt profile, height, width, and so forth. Um, so personally, I fit minimal and build up, um, you know, and I use toe spaces if people need it or whatever else. So I could do a whole video about that um, another time. So anyway, it has the brush lining. It also has different shanks. So in the Miracle model, there's two shank options only in this one, and it's light medium and light hard. So in the light medium, this is what I've got here, the light medium, it's, um, the materials are different. I don't know what the materials are in the shank in this one. I need to find out. Um, so when I go to the factory, which I hope will be this year, fingers crossed, um, I will be able to discover that in more detail and video 
you know, do a video at the factory as well. That'd be really cool for you guys. Anyway, so the shank is, um, it's like a red, let's peel it back so I can try to show you guys. It's like a red card kind of shank. And the Miracle Shank itself is extremely flexible. Um, it, as you can see, when I want to bend it, it wants to bend quite low down. Um, it has a very easy roll through as well. I stock it in light, medium and light hard. Um, and that's the only two options that it comes in. It's a really nice sleek model as well. So I think that's all I can tell you about the Miracle. Um, yeah. So next up we have the classic dream point. Now this is where people get confused. They do not realize there's two different versions of dream point. The first original dream point is quite different to dream point 2007, also known as Allure in America. So let's start with the classic dream point. I actually don't um, tend to fit with this anymore because I personally prefer the dream point 2007. If anyone is watching this and they like the Dreampoint Classic, feel free to DM me because if I have your size and shank and you would like to buy it from me, I will do you a deal on them because I just personally prefer the 2007 model. Anyway, so the Dreampoint came first. Now, the Dreampoint is different to Dreampoint 2007 in a few um, variations. First of all, the platform is smaller. Now this is like my personal findings. And even when I measure the platform with the Dreampoint 2007 pre-arch, there's definitely a difference. So I don't think I'm imagining that. Um, and it feels quite angled. That's the best feeling I can say. It's padded on the inside, same for the padding like Miracle, but it is, um, Padded here and in the tip, the little foamy bit. There is no padding in the box like Miracle. The heel height is a classic 2007 heel height. It's quite high. Same with the sides. The wing is not as high as the Dreampoint 2007 model. Um, also, the pleats are different. They don't look the same as Dreampoint 2007. And the shank is not pre-arched. So it's very flat and it doesn't really want to bend into the arch as much. So it's stiffer. Even in a medium flexible, it's stiffer. Now the shanks in Dreampoint and Dreampoint 2007 are both made from thermoplastic materials. Now shoes that are made with the thermoplastic shanks are designed to mold by heat. You must not try to manually bend with your hands because they're more liable to snap. They just need working in with your feet. The hotter your feet get, the quicker they're going to mould. Now, they tend to have a bit of a longer lifespan due to such technologies. So you will find, um, and I've found personally, that a lot of dancers tend to get a little bit more lifespan out of these models. Um, again, the paste is, um, do you know what's interesting? Is the paste in the Dream Point is a little bit firmer than Dream Point 2007. I've just noticed that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's all about the classic Dream Point that came first. Next up, we're going to go on to the Dream Point 2007 or 2007, however you want to call it. Now, this model is also called Allure in America, and it's so much more improved than the classic Dream Point, in my opinion, right? Number one, it has more flex in the box, it's the flexible post. It has higher wings. It's a lot more added for stability. It has, again, the high heel, but it feels and looks more sleeker on the foot. Again, we've got the padding on the inside, as you can see. Um, however, this is where it's a bit of a game changer. The shank, as you can see, is pre-arch. Now, all the other Grisho models want to bend like this eventually, um, and some more so than others, depending on the shank strength and whatever. But as you can see, it's very prominent, right, from the get-go. So at the three-quarter area, it wants to suck right into your arch like that. 
Yeah, right, Brooke. It's like, I even get now people trying to order from me and calling it alert, and I'm just like, <laughs> you know, um, let's just call it Dream Point 2007. <laughs> oh. CDO technique says she has miracles and don't like the high wings. Well, um, you can always um, mush down the wings, by the way, by using some rubbing alcohol or a little bit of water and put it on the wing to destroy the wing. Or you can just custom order it without high wings. Anyways, let's carry on. So with the Dream Point 2007 pre-arched, um, it also has a broader platform, as you can see. So, you know, when I've tried on a classic Dream Point on one foot and a Dream Point 2007 on the other foot, I can feel a major difference in balance and the stability of the platform. Now, don't forget, everyone feels something different in point shoes. So just because I feel this doesn't mean everybody else will, but I'm just also going by what my customers have told me to. Um, so there you go. So that's astounding. That is a lot of mod. I'm pretty sure I've gone through all the models built on 2007 last in this episode. It's incredible how much variety Grishko has and how much variety people don't know about, sadly. So I'm hoping that just going through these models with you guys has taught you something at least. Um, and I really you know, hope that it will open people's eyes a little bit more to the incredible um, amount, the incredible options, because it's just, there's so many possibilities. Um, and it just, you know, another, I just want to go through a few things that I get asked. And one of those things is, oh, I heard Grish goes up for narrow fee. Um, oh my God, thanks for reminding me, I didn't go on about Karcher. So Karcher was built on 2007. And thank you so much, CDO Techniques, because it's built on 2007 last, so I must include it. So I'm just going to go and grab that shoe right now, because I've got um, one pair, which I'm testing out at the moment. So hold up. Let me go and grab it. Here's the Karcher. So um, yeah, for some reason, I didn't, I forgot about it. It's built on 2007, so it's definitely, it's part of this video, right? So thank God CDO Techniques reminded me. So um, I've only had this shoe a few weeks. Um, I found out about it when I was working for Grishko Nicolay, you know, um, in America, the Los, um, Atlantic Dance, Dance Retail Show in Los Angeles. I didn't actually know about it till then. Um, now, I've been wearing this shoe and I have lots to say about it. I'm still yet to do my review on it, but I will go through a few basics and my opinion of it so far. Obviously, don't forget, I don't have the best feet in the world, so... I'm really curious to try it on other people's feet, not just my own. <laughs> um, I have it here in satin. So for those of you who don't know, Karcher, Katcher, I, I can't even pronounce it, it's terrible. Um, it's built on 2007. It comes in canvas, but you can also order it in satin. I ordered it in satin because I like satin, you know? Um, but you know, I can understand why people would like it in canvas because it's cool. By the way, another top tip, you can order other Grishko models in canvas if you so desire. Some people don't know that. So the Karcher model is built on 2007 last. Now let's run down about how, how I personally feel it, it varies compared to the 2007 last. There are a few things that I might have changed about it. Um, one thing, it came with the elastic drawstring, but the ones at the Atlantic Dance Retail Show didn't have this. So I'm really hoping it won't just keep being elastic drawstrings because I hate elastic drawstrings. If you're just tuning in, I spoke earlier about my personal view that if a shoe fits well, you don't need to use the drawstring like too much. I actually don't have drawstrings in my shoes and I'm super narrow, but I can still get away with it. So um, I'm not a fan of elastic drawstrings, but let's ignore that bit for a moment. Um, and yes, my darning tutorial will be coming soon. I have so many ways I darn now and I'm excited to finally do it for you guys because I have so many requests about it and I'm so pleased that people like the way I darn. Um, so this is Karcher. Now, Karcher from 2007 family, it was made because of wanting a shoe that's like for contemporary ballet. So 
Now, I don't do contemporary, so I don't know a great deal about it. I've watched it. I've got friends who dance it and customers who dance it. Um, so with contemporary ballet, there's different um, ways of dancing, obviously. <laughs> but um, there's also sliding motions with the feet of like, you know, it's different, right? So the idea was with the Karcher is they wanted to create a shoe that would enable these movements. And it also has a built-in suede toe cap, which, by the way, this shoe can come vegan. Just, you know, I'm vegan too, so just want to put that out there. Um, now, personally, I have most of my customers glue suede caps on because they prefer it to darning. A lot of them don't want to darn or they don't know how to. Um, I darn my shoes, as you know, so I found, I found it a little bit weird to get used to because... Although I have worn suede caps on shoes before, it's just not my personal preference. But, you know, if you don't want it with this, you can always order it with Val. Because custom order, you can pretty much do anything. Anyway, so it has this, as you can see. However, this is how it varies to the 2007. Look at this slide quarter. It's so low. It's quite low, like smart point. If you've, excuse me, if you've ever worn a smart point or felt one, it has a low side quarter like this. The heel does the scoopy thing, like Smart Point does. So it kind of dips up and scoops around. Now, with oh my god, you know what? I didn't go. I didn't show you guys the three thousand and seven pointies either. <laughs> I'll show you those in a moment. I'm just going to put them on the table here so I don't forget. Because geez, that's very crucial. Um, one moment. God, this is why doing a live is so much different to me filming for YouTube because usually for YouTube I'm super organised. Um, whereas when I do a live, it's just so spontaneous. You don't don't know what's going to happen, right? Leave it on the edge. <laughs> so, <laughs> so with the um, Karcher, um, yeah, low side scoopy heel. Now, originally it was meant to have a V vamp. I don't know what happened to that. I would have preferred it with a V because I love a V vamp and it's nice to have something a bit different in the 2007 models, right? So, you know, if you'd like a V, you can custom order it that way. Um, but anyway, it has a U vamp, as you can see, and it is slightly shorter in the vamp. Um, not majorly, but a smidge. However, a few things I've noticed. Look at this profile height. It's super low. It's... In my opinion, it is, you know, here's a 3007, here's a Kartra. Can you see the difference, guys? Look, the profile height is so much more sleek and lower. So that's pretty mind-blowing. If you've got a foot that is quite high profile, or a higher crown, as people call it, you might struggle getting your foot in the Kartra, even in a bigger whip. I'm not sure how that's going to play out. I can't really report back till I put it on wider feet. Um, so, now, here's where it gets interesting. I ordered it in super soft because I wanted to show people the softest option it comes in. And um, basically, the shank is different in the respect that, okay, it's easy roll through as well, but the shank is like roll through through the whole thing. The best way I can describe it is when I have the 3007 in super soft on one foot and the Karcher in super soft on the other foot and I do some roll throughs, I personally feel that the roll through is smoother in 3007 than it is this one. In this one, the motion feels like it's at one. It's like one piece, one whole piece of shank that goes with you. Whereas in 3007, I find that there's a lot more articulation. I don't know why that is. And, you know, maybe they'll answer me about that. However, the shank is, um, I have manually bent it a lot. Another thing I need to tell you about is when this shoe comes new, it is really stiff, which is weird because I ordered it in super soft. Now, usually when I order the shoes in super soft, I can still manually bend it a little bit easier. With this one, with the Karcher, I had to wait till it got to room temperature and then start to bend it. I had to bend it a lot, as you can see, because I was trying to find ways to get over better in it. Because here's where I struggled with it. I don't know if it's just me, but what I find interesting 
In the Karcher model, I don't get over onto point very well compared to 3007. The reason why I think that is, is because the platform is very strange. It's very, very flat, super flat. And I don't, I feel like because of the platform being this flat, it kind of feels weird to me and I can't, can't describe it. I need to put my charger in my phone because it's starting to run out. So I need to grab that in a second. Um, so the platform and the lower profile, I think it kind of defeats me getting over, which is strange because you'd think with the lower vamp and it being soft, um, I would get over in it. And in my video, I will do about comparing Karcher to 3007. It will show you in very fine detail about that. Um, so Karcher, of course, in canvas model, um, is great for people that need a shoe that is um, kind of almost that pancake looked look so they don't have to um, do much with it. Of course, if they want to pancake it to match their skin tone, they can do it over the top of it. But the idea is, is it's very matte. So I don't know if, if many of you know, but a lot of um, professional companies, they have to pancake their shoes to match their skin tone. Um, to give a longer leg line and to also um, not have shiny shoes on stage, depending on what they're dancing. In some productions, they wear shiny satin. In some, they don't. Hang on a minute. Let me just read. I'll read some of these comments now. One moment. Oh, Alex. So um, I have quite a low profile foot too. Now, there's a few remedies for this. If you find a shoe that is considered low profile, but it's still a little bit higher in profile, you can step on it to make it flatter, but obviously that would increase the width, so just be careful. Or you can try a box liner or a size changer inlay. Um, or there's many ways of adjusting padding to make it work. Um, unfortunately, in custom order, you cannot change the profile height because it changes the shape of the shoe. So it wouldn't be on the last, if that makes sense. Um, but I've managed to fit some pretty low profile feet with methods of tweaking padding and whatever. So I'm pretty sure I could sort you out. Um, let's see what else. Oh, so yeah, um, Eloise Ballet asks for beginners, which ribbon is better, stretchy ribbon or normal ribbon? So personally, I prefer using the ribbon with the little elastic insert, not the fully stretchy ribbon. Um, and I use it on all dancers because they like the comfort of it and the fact that it teaches them not to do their ribbons too tight. Oh, hey, Fernando. Um, but also it teaches the dancers um, to use their ankles more. Now, I don't, personally, I am not a fan of the ribbon that is stretchy throughout um, because I feel that should be used on dancers that are more advanced or professionals because it doesn't offer enough support for dancers that are younger or just start, just starting out. Um, so that's my personal view. I actually really hate standard ribbon, like classic ribbon. I'm not into it at all because it's so um, shiny. It moves around a lot and it doesn't give enough support. And also I tend to find dancers that come to me from using traditional ribbon, they often have too much ribbon or they do it so tight that they get Achilles tendonitis problems. I'm just gonna switch through these comments. So I will answer a few questions now, now that I've gone, oh, I didn't, I didn't go through the 3007. So actually, before I do the questions, let's go on to this because I missed this shoe out and it needs a mention because this video is all about shoes built on the 2007 mast, right? So 3007 came out initially as um, a shoe for the market in America um, to replace the 2007 because of trademark issues are going on, which hopefully will be resolved soon. And at first, obviously, I couldn't get access to it because it was made for America. Um, then I got contacted, I think it was like November time, and told um, that they would send me some 3007s to try and to give my opinion on them. So I did, and I fell in love with them. So what I really loved was there was improvements that I personally wanted for the 2007 model. And naturally, I really wanted the shoe, right? And then they decided they're gonna offer it to everyone, which is fantastic. So I now am 
not only the first person in the UK to try the 3007, but I'm also the first UK stockist and I have my stock now. So if any of you guys are watching that are UK based, I know that I cannot fit you right now because of the whole coronavirus thing, but I have been, um, if you already wear 2007 or models on that, on that last, I can assist you um, online and I can send you the right model. Um, size, whatever. Anyway, stop rambling, let's go on to it. So, 3007. Here's how it varies. If you've missed it, I did a full video that went on for like half an hour on my YouTube channel and it tells you in the finest of details how it varies compared to the classic 2007. And you will see um, on my feet, I have one 2007 and one 3007 and the difference is incredible because I never get over in the free and um, in the 2007 like I'm always held backwards and it, I, it just doesn't look right on me in 3007 I get over just like that that's what it, I find really magical about it now the reason for that is the shank is different and the way it's constructed is different so let's tell you about that first of all the box shape is the same because it's built on the same last right but it feels a little bit different it feels a little bit more um generous i guess is a word you could use again it's a low profile shoe it looks a bit bulbous here because this pair hasn't been like molded it has um a pace that isn't the typical 2007 traditional pace where it's quite hard but it isn't the flex pace either in my opinion, it varies between the two. So it's still got a sturdiness, but it's actually very, um, um, I'll go through the shank in a second. It's um, a little bit softer. The vamp is not supposed to be shorter, um, but when I compare it, it is to me um, by like maybe <laughs> like half a centimeter of that. Next up, the side quarters are are a little bit shorter but can you see the heel we have that scoopy heel again but it's also a little bit lower so this eradicates one of the typical problems of 2007 now if you have ever worn 2007 or seen it on other people even when it's the correct size it so um the hard shanks in Grishko's can be really, really hard, like so hard that they don't melt your arch. Now, here's the big misconception. A lot of people seem to think that if they have a higher arch or a bendier foot, that they need a harder shank. But that's not always true. Um, because the reason is, now I fitted tons of bendy feet, tons of strong feet, um, you know, and people that get put in the harder shanks because they're told they need a harder shank, tend to actually kill the shoe quicker a lot of the time. And the reason is, is the shank ends up being too flat like this and it doesn't mold to their foot and doesn't um, distribute the pressure evenly. So what happens is either it snaps or they end up shooting downwards in their shoe and all the box goes mushy very quickly. So by actually going to a harder shank doesn't always mean that it's going to last longer or it doesn't always mean that it's going to support you in the correct way. Often with um, feet that are super archy, um, it's best to have shanks that melt really into the sweet spot of where their arch bends. Now the way um, arches bend is different for everybody. I will actually do a video all about this soon. Um, but yeah, Alex, you know, honestly, some of the Grishkos can be incredibly hard, especially super, super hard shanking some of the models. I don't even, I've never even put someone in that because there's just no need, in my opinion. Anyways, so um, I'm just going to quickly go through these comments um, and then I'll finish talking to you guys about the 3007. For those of you just tuning in, I had to do a second part because Instagram kicked me off because I think it had enough of me. Um, and then the it wouldn't save to my camera roll, so I'm probably just gonna go and have to screen record it later. Um, but this is part two. Feel free to tune in later and view it on my live, or I'll put it, I will put it on IGTV. Um, but you've already missed loads. But obviously, I'm not gonna go back through it. So let me just have a little look. Oh, the Leotard, thank you. It's a Grishko one. It's from the new collection, um, Grishko Academy. 
and it's super soft. Um, Grishko Leo's are just very different from many other brands that I've tried. The fabrics are very divine. They wash really well. The color doesn't fade. They feel like a second skin. Um, and they also just show off lines better. The Academy collection is actually the uniform that the Bolshoi and the Vaganova Academy wear and the teachers that work there collaborated with Grishko to create this dance wear. Um, so that's really fascinating. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's got, I can really waffle on. I just, it's crazy. So can you talk a bit about sizing among these mod models? Are they the same sizing, all of them? What about compared to other lives like the Frate? So I am actually going to do a video for you guys all about sizing and how it can vary because I don't know if you know, but the sizing can vary between models. Now in the 2007 and the models based on 2007, they do typically fit the same, but let me tell you as a fitter and as me personally wearing them, I have noticed a few things. I have noticed that in 3007, Sometimes I can even go half a size down, don't know how. In Nova and Nova Flex, I've noticed in Nova Flex it fits a little bit bigger on some people. Again, I'm not sure why that is because it shouldn't. Um, in Dreampoint 2007, sometimes people prefer to go half a size down from a 2007 size. Um, yeah, that's about as much as I can tell you about it from there. Oh, Miracle, because Miracle is padded on the inside like more so than dream point and dream point 2007 um it can create a little bit of more of a firmer fit so sometimes people will size up and sometimes change the width as well so let me finish talking to you about about the 3007 because oh my god i have so much to say um so with <laughs> with the 3007 um i can't remember where i got to so let's go through it again might as well so Again, 2007 last, but it's majorly different in the respect that it has the changes to 2007 that I wanted. If you haven't seen it, I did a very intricate video on YouTube where I actually show you me and I'm wearing 2007 and 3007 in the same size, width and shank, comparing them. And the difference is incredible. So be sure to check it out. My YouTube is youtube.com forward slash straight to the point. Um, yeah, straight to the point, I think. Yeah, that's right. Anyways, so the shanks in 3007 are different. Here's why. They are the same materials used. However, they have a much easier roll through. And the shank, this is medium, by the way. The shank wants to bend more generously. So it kind of wants to bend a little bit lower. Also, the side quarters on 3007 are lower down. Can you see that? Let me just grab you the 2007 so we can show you the comparison. Can you see the difference there? See what I mean about side quarters, the side quarter seam and also the heel height and the smoother satin. So in the 3007, not only does it bend more generous in the three quarter area of the shank, it also has an easier demi point compared to 2007 standard. Now, of course, like I did mention, in the 2007 Pro, the shank is a little bit more um, softer because of the technologies in the shoe. So bear that in mind as well. Now, 3007 also comes in Pro, and it also comes in Pro Flex. I don't have those right now, so I can't show you, but it's the same things as 2007 so pro version means sound absorption so that means in here and in here it's got a layer where it doesn't make so much noise and also I imagine like the 2007 pro it's a little bit more generous here and in the paste so the paste of 3007 is not the typical 2007 traditional paste where it's really hard but it's not the flex paste such as Nova it is um, in between, in my opinion. And I found that it molded to my foot a lot quicker. It also has a little bit of a higher wing, nothing drastic, but just slightly. The vamp appears to be a little bit shorter. I don't know if that's true, but that's my personal findings. Then a big game changer here, the platform is definitely more broader. Look at that. Um, in the YouTube video, I really show these details, by the way. So let's show you 2007 and 3007. 
it doesn't really look that different there but let me tell you it feels majorly different so also with the 3007 not only is there more here but also it feels more rounded so in my opinion it gives a lot more stability now of course everyone feels so different on point you know i've got people that wear 2007 with no problems but i'm one of those that you know i didn't get over in 2007 even when i had a softer shank or custom ordered it with a shorter vamp and god knows what else so this was a game changer for me because i can wear it out of the bag and i don't seem to have an issue with it i have just custom ordered myself a pair and i've gone for a v vamp because i love a v vamp and i've also gone for vegan option for the vegan sole um and i've tweaked a few little things that i wanted to tweak about it um so i'm just going oh cornell's joined hey cornell nice to see you back on instagram um so for those just tuning in i have been talking for ages about Gristro models built in 2007 last will be saved to igtv um what else can i tell you about the 3007 oh my god i forgot so in the insides of the heel piece here they put in a lining it's like a microfiber and they have this in smart point as well now they did this because it adds a little bit more traction to keeping the heel piece on your heel now if you ever have this problem with slipping heels i did a video all about this on youtube as well because there's many ways to remedy it through elastics elastic placement rosin water hairspray cutting a hole in the back of your tights there's many ways to remedy it so if you're stuck or also it can be to do with the roll through the debbie point by the way just so you know anyway <laughs> so this addition um is quite nice it's comfortable as well it's very smooth so that was very nice it's much smoother as you can see it's double upper again very sleek so yeah i love it and i love it so much that i probably won't stock 2007 again I will replace it with the 3007 unless one of my customers asked me to order in 2007. Um, so I've already spoke about the Karcher and my thoughts on it. I don't know if he was here, but it was in the, the previous part, part one of this video. So I will um, say just go and watch that or wait till I do my video for YouTube where I'll be doing a really intricate um, review on it because I have a lot to say about it more so than i did just now um that's really great news tash about your shoes by the way um i'm really pleased to hear that and i hope that despite the coronavirus times that you're actually um doing some point and i hope that everyone's watching is you know keeping up with their strength work it's very important because even if you have a couple of weeks off point i tell you it's like starting all over again so even if you do some foot and ankle exercises you know, a little bit each day and put your pointies on. I'm doing it too. You know, I put my pointies on today for 10 minutes. Made a great difference. Um, so Alex says, 2007 is so near and yet so far for me. So maybe the 3007 holds promise. Possibly. I would have to obviously fit you in person to see. But I'm very excited to do that. Maybe we can even do a little um, video together. Um, so, yeah. So I've now finally gone through all the models built on 2007 last, thank goodness. And I'm sure you're all thinking, thank God for that, because she really waffles on. <laughs> um, yeah, so now I'm going to, it's now quarter to one in the morning here in England. And I feel wide awake because if you didn't know much about me, I'm an insomniac and I get very creative at night time. I do love the daytime, I love sunshine, I'm a big summer lover, I love to be outside, um, but unfortunately I've always suffered with insomnia um, and you know, it's not always bad because unless I've got an early job to get to, um, it's not the end of the world, I'm quite fortunate that I can work around it and I really felt the need to whack my makeup on and do this video tonight. Um, so Ava, regarding your dream point, are they the dream point standard or are they the dream point 2007? So the dream point 2007 is the pre-arch version. Um, I did information about that in my little bit of the live, which is part one, if you guys are just tuning in and want to know. Um, so let's have a little scroll through this chat and I'm just going to see if I've missed anything. That's really good, Tash. I'm pleased to hear it regarding keeping your strength up fantastic 
and Ariella, I think I pronounced your name right, hopefully. <laughs> um, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Um, let's see if I've missed anything. Mm -hmm. Spoken about my leotard, yes I have. Sorry guys, just scrolling. I haven't missed anything by the looks of it. So does anyone else have any other questions? Um, and if there's not too many, I'll be able to answer them all. <laughs> right, Alex, I feel you. I used to be like that too. Um, for those of you who are curious about what I wear, I wear Maya Ones. Um, and I usually wear them in a custom order. Um, but now I'm also wearing the 3007 a lot, just off the peg. Um... And those are basically the models that I love right now for me and my feet, because my feet are a nightmare to fit, I cannot tell you. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to stay, I'm, I will stay on here for a while and I'll see if there's anything I could, I'm just going to go through my notes actually to see if there's anything I've forgotten. Um, because the likelihood is I have actually forgotten something, so give me a moment. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you guys. Um, so with regards to Grishko models, there are obviously the lasts. Now, if I remember rightly, there's like five different lasts, but here's where it gets interesting with Grishko. There's actually, give me a minute. <laughs> There's actually 36 different Grishko models, if you include the Pro version and the Pro Flex versions. Now, I'm going to reel off them all right now for you. <laughs> I'm sure this is fascinating. So we've got 2007, 2007 Pro, 2007 Pro Flex, 3007, 3007 Pro, 3007 Pro Flex. Novice 2007, Alice, Nova, Nova Pro, Nova Flex, Karcher, Miracle, Dreampoint, Dreampoint 2007 Pre-Arch, Fuate, Fuate Pro, Fuate Pro Flex, Ulanova 1, Ulanova Pro, Ulanova Pro Flex, Ulanova 1 Pro Flex, sorry, Ulanova 2, which I think is discontinued, not quite sure. And Ulanova, oh god, I can't pronounce it. Ulanova, oh god, I lost it. I have, can I not pronounce it now? Oh, oh my god, I've, quite, I've totally got tongue tied. Anyway, that model is based on Vaganova, by the way. And Vaganova model is discontinued now, for those who don't know. But the Maya 2 is built on Vaganova. Anyway, then we've got Triumph. We've got Triumph Pro, Super Triumph, Super Triumph Pre-Arched, Maya 1, Maya 1 Pro, Maya 1 Pro Flex, Maya 2, Maya 2 Pro, Smart Point, Smart Point Pro, Elite and Elite Pro. So that's pretty astounding that there's that many models built on, you know, a small amount of lasts. So it goes to show there is so much variation in Grishko's. And you know what? I was one of you guys where, you know, I've been to, before I was a fitter, I got thrown into a pair of Grishko's that weren't right for me and it put me off the brand because the retailers tend to not inform you about the other models available because unfortunately a lot of retailers are not educated enough in the different models. And this is where I am here to help you out. Um, and I understand a lot of retailers stock a lot of brands so they cannot afford to stock a variety of models which is fair enough but um, I don't like it when people get put off because there is so much variety in Grishko it's unbelievable and every time I fit somebody who has tried Grishko before is always astounded at how much option there is and they always find four to five at least different models in Grishko that they like um, so that says it all really and this is why I want to do this series, because I really want to educate you guys and show you the possibilities out there um, and talk to you about the variations, because I know Grishko's inside out at the end of the day. So 
I thought this would be great. I'm just gonna look at my notes, see if I've missed anything. Also, forgot to say, um, remind, it, remind you all again, next Friday, I will be going live on Grishko World Instagram. I will be joined by Grishko girl Shakira, and I, I have fitted her since her very first pair of point shoes. Um, and it's been fantastic. So we're gonna talk together. I'm gonna give you a little talk about different models. We're gonna speak to Shakira about the models that she's worn and talk about her full-time training because she's training full-time at Trim Park School for the Performing Arts. Um, and it'll be really cool. So I hope you guys tune in. I don't know what time it's gonna be yet. So I'll be sure to put a post up with the different time zone options as well. So that'll be next Friday, which is Friday the, I don't even know what day it is in all this coronavirus stuff, right? It's a Saturday and it doesn't feel like it. Um, well, it is now Saturday, technically speaking, because it's 10, well, five to one in the morning in England. Um, so next Friday, the 10th of April, I'll be live on the Grishko World Instagram. So I'm just going to read these notes because I am such a, <laughs> I don't know what word you can give me. I am a perfectionist, but also I like to make sure I've not missed anything out. Um, and doing YouTube videos, which I usually do compared to Instagram live is very different. Oh, another thing people don't know, um, Grishko possessed the skills um, of an ancient method of pointy making. Um, and it's a 200 year old method that has been refined over decades of practice within the Grishko company. Um, and when I eventually go to the factory, I will promise to do you guys as much videos as I can about what goes on there because it's very fascinating. Um, and I'm sure we can all learn so much from that. So, um, what else have I missed? So I'm pretty sure I said this, but um, some people think that Grish goes for narrow feet only, and it's just not true. I actually fit a lot of wide feet and some super wide feet. I've even had dancers that have been actually told by other shops that they can't fit them because they're, they're too wide. And they've come to me and I've fitted them. So, you know, there really is no such thing as um, a foot that is too wide. In fact, wider feet are more common nowadays. And I'm the opposite end, I'm super narrow. Um, I'm, I wear in um, 2007 models based on those, an X or a double X, tends to go for the X. In my one, I wear a one X, but even that can be a bit wider when it breaks down. So I have to use an inlay sometimes, or I have to play around with padding to make it work for me. Um, just going through my notes, making sure I've not missed anything out here. Yeah, right, Alex, so there you go. And also, um, for those of you who don't know, in custom order, you can actually order a six X width, so one width up from the widest width. And some Grishko models actually fit wider than other models. So that's another thing to bear in mind about the widths. Um, yeah, I've actually covered all my notes. I'm pretty impressed because I wrote a stack of notes about what I wanted to speak about in this video regarding 2007 um, and the models built on the 2007 last, and I've pretty much covered it all, I think. Um, so I'm gonna stay on for a little bit, and if anything comes to my mind I wanna speak about, I'll speak about it. If anyone's got questions, feel free to put them up and I'll answer if I can. Um, I'm just gonna speak a bit about what I do. So if you guys didn't know, um, I'm a Grishko Master Point Shoe Fitter, and I'm based in Essex. Um, I have a fitting room at home and it's only 30 minutes from central London, so I'm pretty centrally based. I do travel around doing fittings and I travel to schools and dancers' homes. I even sometimes travel and get an Airbnb and invite dancers over for fittings. Um, I fit seven days a week, including evenings. Um, yeah, I also, you know, I'm vegan too, so I can help you guys out the way one vegan option. Also, you know, so with this whole coronavirus thing, obviously I'm not working right now, so I'm not making any money. Um, and I don't know if you guys saw, but I'm actually doing a special offer on the new Grishko dancewear collections. 15% off on all the items, or 20% um, off if you order free items. And I ship worldwide and I can help you with sizing. Um, I'm really looking forward to going back to work. Like I have been working 
kind of, you know, I've been shipping shoes out for customers I already have and I have been um, doing loads of admin and I've never been bored because luckily for me, I always have stuff to do and I don't know the meaning of boredom anymore as an adult because like when you're an adult, you always have stuff to do. But also I have stuff on my to-do list, right? I'm not kidding, that I haven't actually been able to do for years. And I've finally been able to do it. So it's actually been kind of great. Um, and also I spend a lot of time alone anyway due to my job. Um, of course I travel, I meet people a lot and I travel the world and whatever. But I do spend a lot of time at home doing admin and the other finer things that you guys don't see. This job is not just fitting point shoes. There is a lot involved um that you guys don't know about <laughs> um so eloise has asked how do i tie ribbons on point shoes so there's quite a few ways to tie ribbons um i should actually do a video about this i won't show you right now because my camera's up here and i don't really want to try to mess with the light and everything but i will do you a video there's many ways to do it there's some tricks you know that people have um, everyone's got their own little thing going on, but my kind of method is quite straightforward, really, that I do for myself and that most of my dancers do. Um, I also want to do you guys a video speaking about the different ways to sew point shoes for different types of feet, because there is not a way for everybody, you know? Okay, there is a generic way that, that does work for a lot of feet, don't get me wrong, but there are times where, you know, certain feet require a different way of sewing the ribbons and elastics to suit their foot. And I think more people need to know about that as well. I'm actually quite hungry, so I'm probably going to go and get a snack in a moment. Um, so I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, so this one was all about 2007. Um, oh, yes, I will, Brooke. Good idea. So before I go... Um, Brooke has just spoken about something that is quite important actually. If you guys didn't know, Grishkos are all handmade. Now, when a point shoe is handmade by Grishko, um, each maker has a number. And the way you can find this is inside the point shoe. So you might be thinking, well, where is it? Well, on one of the shoes, so you'll have to look in both to find it. Um, if you don't find it the first time around, like I just did. Give me a second. Okay, so you'll have down the front of the vamp portion, under the, under here, under the drawstring casing, you'll have a series of letters and numbers up this top end. There's also numbers under this bit, but ignore that bit for the moment. Under this bit designates the maker number. The maker number is the very last number The very last number at the end. So this one is 45K. I don't know what the end letter stands for yet. I'm not sure. But also what you have inside, it tells you the month and the year of the shoe. And it also tells you the shank um, and the model as well. So yeah, that's a top tip that most, that's, most people don't know that for some reason. So maybe that helped some of you guys out. Now, what that means is each maker, when he makes the shoes, can have his own little way. Now, I know a lot about this bit because I used to, for some reason, really like make number 18 for my Maya Wands. So when I have custom, when I have custom order, I used to always get um, 18. I don't know why, because honestly now I'm not, I'm not so bothered anymore. But I have found that I really like the way that he made the shoes. For me so i always had 18 then one time my special order turned up and it wasn't 18 so i put it on and it felt different um but once i darned it I was, there wasn't a great deal of difference once i darned it but you know there are dancers especially professionals that can notice differences and they will require that maker but that is only in special order and sometimes you know that maker could be quite busy so he might not have enough time um and you can get like a backlog but generally speaking with a custom order it can take up to six weeks um so yeah now i wear any maker i'm not really bothered about it to be honest and i think because i darn my shoe so chunky i i honestly don't notice much difference in the platform 
but this is why when something is handmade there will be variations between them because each man or i don't know if they have women making the shoes i'm curious about that i don't know if they do i know that they have women um putting the satin on and doing other bits like that but i don't know if they have any women there that actually make the basis of the shoe if that makes sense i'll be keen to find, to know um yeah so any other questions put them there for me and then in a bit i'm gonna head off and grab a snack i'll try to figure out where the other part of this video went and if I need to screen record it and then I'll put it together um, and edit it together and then I'll whack it on IGTV so it will be there forever rather than just in a live where it's only there you know for 24 hours it seems Alex I was looking at one of your stories actually recently um, about your point she was and I was like damn I'm sure I could help um, I just, I really wonder when this whole coronavirus thing is going to go. And I really hate the fact that so many people um, are listening to the like lockdown in the UK. There are so many people still going out, you know, with groups of people and still going out and meeting people. It's just not good enough. We need to, you know, listen to what's going on. So someone's asked me, best squish goes for short toes. So I have very short toes. Now, as a fitter, I don't actually encounter toes that are as short as mine, which is really weird. It makes me feel a bit strange. <laughs> um, now, what you want to think about here is not just the vampire. Here's where it goes wrong. A lot of people think that because they've got short toes, they need a shorter vamp, which isn't the, the one part you need to fixate on here. You need to look at the rest of your foot. You need to think about your arch, your technique, your strength, your ankles, the flexibility in your feet and ankles, the way you point your foot, um, how your toes work when you're in point shoes, um, your alignment, oh my God, there's many things. But anyway, when you're fitting someone, if I ever fit someone and you know, I still feel they need a bit of a shorter vamp, I will try the shorter vamp models, which usually cures it, or sometimes I do need to custom order. So let me give you an example. If you've got a dancer who, likes say classic 2007 but of course classic 2007 has a longer vamp and even now with the 3007 they still find it's a little bit too long what you can do in custom order is take the vamp down a little bit or do it yourself um if you do do it yourself please be careful get your teacher's assistance if you're young because some people cut it down too short and it's gone too far i have a video on how to cut the vamp down on my youtube but please act with caution, try it on an old pair first. If you're doing it in a custom order, typically speaking, if it's a 2007 model, most people go half a centimeter or a full centimeter, but never any more than that. You really need to measure the foot and the way that your toes, because the vamp still has to cover your toes at the end of the day. Otherwise you can end up with the vamp not covering your toe joints, knuckling, all sorts of problems. So try to get a fitter's advice for that before you think about that. Now, we have Grishko models off the rack with a shorter vamp. The very shortest, which is a model that I don't like and I very, very rarely fit with it, is the Elite because it's so square. Now, um, personally, I would say don't try Elite just because it has a short vamp because it's such a square shoe and it's so broad and so wide. And also the shank is quite stiff so there's other factors like don't try it just because of the shorter vamp um but other than that you could try Fuerte, you could try mile one you could try smart point you could also try 3007 because look at me i've got the shortest toes i've ever seen and i can wear 3007 off the peg so if i can do it i think more shorter toes could do it uh, miracle as well miracle has a shorter vamp than um the classic 2007s um, and all the models based on 2007 so yeah you need to explore options super triumph that's another one. Oh my god there's so many options <laughs> um let me just read comments hang on oops so the wide feet that i've successfully fitted just off the rack and you know what i th i find People go wrong sometimes with really wide feet is they're using toe pads that are too bulky. 
I never use bulky toe pads ever because I hate them. One, you're having too much extra padding. We don't need padding under the foot. I just don't, unless you've got a medical condition or something going on where you've got, you feel a lot of pressure under the ball of your foot, then okay, you might need something extra under there. But generally speaking, I fit most of my dancers either with toe tape and a gel toe cap and um, spacers or whatever else they need, or an advanced pad, also known as the pro pad. So it has no gel under the foot and just thin gel over the top. That is enough. Then we think about pressure points if they're getting them and I fit to their foot. I cannot stress this enough. If we're thinking, fitting with jellos, you know, those thick silicone toe pads or anything chunky, um, it's taking up room in the shoe. And this is where we end up getting problems with profile height as well. With thicker toe pads, it pushes the foot up and that also disrupts the fit. So personally, I never fit with anything bulky and I never have any complaints. Um, of course, you know, some dancers are more prone to certain areas rubbing or whatever. So you work with that and you perfect it and you sort it out for them. Um, now with off, off the back shoes, I've even fitted, here's where it gets like pretty amazing. I've even fitted dancers in Greenpoint 2007 with a super wide foot. Now that's astonishing because in theory, that shoe should not be fitting a mega wide foot, but I made it happen. I don't know if it's the way I fit shoes that is different to most people. I don't know. Um, maybe I do things a little bit differently. Maybe the way I work the padding and stuff. It's, it's just, it amazes me actually. It's very rare, like super rare that I have to do um, a 6X width custom on anyone because I just have workarounds to make it good for them. Um, there's so much more I could say, you guys. Like, I have oodles of information to give and so many um, tips and tricks and, God, there's just so much. But I really wanted to kind of do a series of videos rather than trying to cram it all into one. So that's why I did this video all about the 2007 models. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to go and grab some food. Um, maybe I'll do a live tomorrow. Um, I'm going to keep this going because there's so many videos I want to do. Um, so yeah, it's been great. And I'll save this one as well. And in a bit, I can join the two pieces of videos to put on IGTV. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you found this helpful in some way. Please do check out my YouTube youtube.com forward slash straight to the point give me a subscribe on there i would appreciate it a lot um also facebook facebook.com forward slash to the point fitting uh have a website as well straight to the point.net i'm everywhere feel free to follow me and any questions that i've not answered feel free to give me a dm um yeah great bye